Okay, is all that we see or seem nothing but a dream within a dream? <laughs> I think that's Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> but uh, we are uh, recording here, I think. So uh, this is a, a uh, boring more or less part of the overall journey and if you're a bike rider one of the ones that you're the most anxious to get over with and that is putting on the gloves and uh, all the other jazz you got to wear to ride in a city where the people are out to get you but I'm on my way over to my dentist so I th this may be a moto blogger first I do not ever recall reading or seeing a uh, vlog vlog a vlog where the writer is going to the dentist abracadabra close the door so a uh, first ladies and gentlemen and you're writing along with me I hope you're as excited about it as I am not <laughs> but uh, we'll get all this stuff put on here we'll fire up Tony Thunder and we will hit the road soon, I promise. Okay, here we go. Get ready, Tony. We're coming. Oh, shoot. <laughs> there is an issue. I don't know if I'm going to record that or not. There is an issue that you do need the keys. Oh, maybe I'll put that in. After all, everybody's human. We've all done something like that. For our startup. Okay. We got it going. We got it going on. All right. Off to the dentist. Down comes the uh, visor, at least partially. I want to start off this ride with a dedication to my friend. Looks like we've got a good view ahead. To my friend who we just said goodbye to the other day friend actually relation uh, via marriage from my son to my daughter-in-law Jerry Field 95 uh, 96 years old we just said goodbye to him we could all hope to have as complete a life as wonderful a life as Mr. Field World War II veteran pilot training pilot I believe I'm not entirely sure of of all of his details but uh, a person that I always admired and uh, whenever we were together certainly a gentleman so good on you Jer you're in the uh, next phase of human existence right now and uh, piloting in a way, a, a different plane of existence. So. Uh, the other gate, we have several gates in our little guarded community here of Santa Luz, Sacred Light, which is the location of the Cooper Mance, Wistful Vistas. And uh, those other gates don't seem to have the problem. That one does. Just doesn't want to let motorcycles loose on the world at large. I'm not sure why. Uh, back to the purpose at hand, which is riding over to the dentist's office and giving you some narration about ownership uh, experiences with a 2017 Aprilia Tuono. Tuono, Tuono. So maybe uh, one of you uh, people out there that see this that have a better grasp of uh, Italiano than I do. Can tell me the correct pronunciation Tuono Tuono I like Tony I like Tony Tony the happy Tuono <laughs> uh, and uh, this being the very first days of March 2018 puts us at about eight or nine months of ownership I'm not exactly sure since I did pick it up in June of 2017 and uh, in, in continuation of that theme, I must say that the ownership experience continues to be rather good. Uh, now I qualify that with a rather 
because there was indeed a factory recall issued that uh, caused me to take it in and kept it out of service for a bit of time. Lane closed, wonderful. Uh, for a bit of time, and that was because of a brake piston, evidently though uh, located in the radial uh, piston on the handlebar, not at the calipers themselves, front calipers. They uh, had a piece of plastic, or a, I'm sure it was an engineered plastic uh, piston, and uh, that plastic in a couple of situations that I think were mostly track related in Europe, broke, or uh, in, in other words, failed. Not sure if broke is the right word, might have uh, split or some other thing, but it failed and uh, caused the front brakes to either be inoperative or uh, at least compromised in their operation. And uh, Piaggio Group, the owners of Aprilia, issued a general recall <coughs> and so did a few others that used that particular brake, which is in this case an M50 by uh, Brembo, which by all accounts is about as good as you can get. But uh, <coughs> the uh, net effect was, uh, I'm sure several hundred thousand uh, not several hundred thousand, probably scores of thousand. This uh, this level of brake, I'm sure, is not that widely used. But I do know that uh, higher-end marks, particularly Italian marks like uh, Ducati and Aprilia, and I'm sure some others were affected. I don't know about MP Augusta or uh, Moto Guzzi, but uh, I'm sure they were affected. So maybe scores of thousands, and, and that might even be a little much at this level. So. I never had a single manifestation of any brake issue whatsoever. So bringing it in, and then when they sent the recall letter, it it uh, it made one feel like, oh um, my goodness, better be a little careful in usage. But after one tentative ride, after receiving the letter, I, I never noticed anything. And I certainly don't take it out to the edge of the envelope that you would get while riding around on a on a racetrack. So. I'm, I was probably about as far removed as that potential problem, that reported potential problem, as one could possibly get. Oh, this is nice. Ain't this wonderful? Okay, this is San Diego Road. Be familiar to some of my viewers. Really a cool road to ride down, uh, for the most part, but uh, doing some construction today. So that's it. The second thing is... Um, to report as far as issues are concerned, and I don't know about this one, I need to uh, ask uh, somebody who's uh, aware, and that is immediately after having the uh, brake piston replaced under warranty, I was coming home on the freeway, uh, we call them freeways back east, they call them parkways, Autostrada, uh, M motorways I think maybe in the UK, I don't know uh, about the rest of the world, but anyway, it's a high-speed, uh, higher-speed road. And uh, I had it in cruise control, which is a great... Man, I love that cruise control on this machine. Oh, that guy's right on my tail, you delete. So, uh, as I say, love that uh, cruise control. And uh, cruising along, just as the name implies, at about 80 miles an hour, and all of a sudden there was, looked like there was a little bit of a Christmas tree effect on the uh, dash lights on young, young Tony here. And uh, the cruise control disengaged rather abruptly and uh, wouldn't re-engage until later when I had no, no other issues. It still responded to the throttle and it still worked well and I could still ride. and. Uh, there were no, uh, the check engine light uh, was not illuminated, did not stay on. So, uh, no other issues, but for uh, whatever it's worth, okay, we're gonna lane split, this is California. We are indeed able to lane split here. Thank you, California Motor Authorities. 
Uh, but it wouldn't re-engage, and uh, I, got, I finally got to where I was going off the freeway, shut the machine off, uh, walked around, took a look, what the heck I was looking for. <laughs> Lord only knows, I don't know what you would see, a uh, stick through the spokes or something, but uh, no outward manifestation of any issues, and I started it back up, got back on the road, and uh, indeed the cruise control would engage. So not sure what happened there i suppose it's always possible riding along down the road that i might have uh, inadvertently brushed one of the control surfaces with a thumb or a finger and disengaged it disengaged it rather abruptly uh causing that issue but uh, it's a little bit of a mystery at the moment and uh not being a person who rides all that much on our freeways or parkways I, I don't particularly enjoy that. I only use them as a means to get from one place to another. That, uh, ha I haven't really had a chance to use the cru cruise control on a, on a little bit of a longer basis since then. So I'll have to report on that later on. Uh, I've done a little bit of fiddling around with the suspension. I need to get the SAG set, the famous SAG because I'm sure this is set for the USA and I might be a little lighter than uh, perhaps the, uh, the uh, average or the target American F. War Dupois for this machine. So I backed off uh, actually some of the uh, suspension settings because these uh, they come out of the factory set to be, at least felt to me, uh, set to be relatively firm but uh, handle sublimely just really handle well so you always want that uh, compromise between road compliance and handling you want to be able to tuck into a corner and have the machine hold that line and run along and yet weather bumps with a plum <laughs> weather bumps without being too unsettling to the whole activity that's going through particularly mid-corner if you're in some of the rural roads and you're playing along and trying to let go of your inner Rossi a little bit we're just cruising along in third gear here let go of your inner Rossi a little bit and uh, <coughs> you get set up to go into a corner and you run across and you're loaded up on that side and you run across some fairly sizable bumps it can be it could be uh, let's say I think the polite word would be disconcerting which means it can throw you all over the place and probably not your uh, not your preferred outcome there so you want you want uh, particularly on the street you want as much compliance as you can dial in uh, with as yet a firm and uh, reliable response for your sporting activities track is a whole different issue uh, I like to say people love uh, smooth tracks but I personally have never been on a completely smooth track there's always some bump out there and it's typically entry to or exit from a corner because that's where the cars bounce up and down as they uh, run in and out of the apex anyway so uh, you usually have some kind of bump but let's say it's not typically a washboard bump like you might get on a uh, uh, typical road it's usually a sinking part of the overall pavement that reflects the cars that have been driving over it so uh, done that with the suspension and that's fun to play with that's kind of interesting to play with I find by the way when you do that that it's good to write down where you started uh, when you start fiddling around with uh, settings machine settings because it is so so easy to go back later on and say well you know what I remember I think I liked it the way the factory delivered it you know perhaps they do know what they're doing rooms full of engineers designing things who knew that they could get things right so you might want to go back to that original setting and if you don't have it written down or noted uh, you're gonna be chasing your tail as they we used to like to say on uh, racetrack usage you tile yourself down into a little rat hole and you couldn't get yourself back to where you thought okay at the end of the day the original settings were working just fine so I like to uh, keep a little write down where you started how many clicks in how many clicks out 
and uh, uh, work the varieties from there. Played with suspension a little bit, uh, haven't really done all that much else with it. I, I've toyed with the idea of getting some mirror extenders, rear view mirror extenders, like I did with the Beamer, but actually uh, the rear view mirrors on Tony are, are really pretty decent. So uh, at the risk of giving them big old Barney ears sticking out, which is fine for functionality, but less than totally pleasing on aesthetics, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to go down that route. So probably, uh, probably after thinking about it, I probably won't do that. Speaking of bumpy roads, here we go. Uh, and I'll probably keep the stock mirrors and the stock mirror locations. The only other thing, so uh, before we go into uh, future, future state, days of future past, uh, just to continue on what's going on, uh, I'll round it off right there. That's really about it. These machines will work really well right out of the box, so you don't have, there's not a lot that's expected of you than to fill it with gas. Whoa. Oh, nice job. Yeah, ain't you special. There you have life on a motorcycle in Southern California. And it's a Honda, of course. So, um... Uh, that's about it for right now. The uh, Talking about the future, we're going to shift over to the future as we enjoy our ride over to the dentist. Uh, and that is that I'm really toying with the idea of going ahead and replacing the exhaust. I know I said I was not going to do that while the machine was still under warranty. But, you know, I think that uh, I just am objecting more and more as I walk out and I look at that uh, Euro compliant exhaust particularly compared uh, to what's on the uh, Beamer my 2014 Beamer S1000R they just did such a good job now their later exhaust to be the latest uh, revision of Euro compliance is also uh, not appealing but uh, this is a 2014 the BMW is and it's just so much nicer looking so uh, I've been talking to a couple of people and they are just uh, sitting on my shoulder and telling me, dude, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to get a tail tidy. Everybody has a tail tidy. You won't even be able to sell the thing if you get a tail tidy. Well, it's not for sale. But, uh, and then they go into the exhaust and uh, getting the uh, race ECU. You got to do the race ECU uh, or an aftermarket ECU or something like that. Eh, maybe, I don't know, but uh, about the ECU thing. Uh, but I've been told, and I think this is pretty smoothly fueled anyway, the Tuono, especially compared to some other modern machines I've ridden uh, that uh, really were abrupt on, on and off throttle transitions depending upon the mode selected or if the machine had modes at all. But even this machine, as well fueled as it is, uh, particularly in the lower gears, which you find yourself in most of the time riding in civilized company, is a little bit jerky. It, c it can be a little bit herky-jerky as you're trying to hold a steady cruise position. And uh, I was just talking to a fellow and he was waxing philosophical about how much different his machine felt that he had put the aftermarket uh, fueling map in and the exhaust system. Claimed it was actually a different machine. <laughs> so, I don't know, that kind of stuff gets you thinking. Pretty expensive prospect on top of already expensive ownership of an already expensive machine. But I have to say it's pretty intriguing. It's intriguing for the aesthetics and it's intriguing for the fact that right now here I am cruising along and, and when I let off trying to stay a respectable distance behind the car in front of me and when I just let off that throttle a little bit, <clears throat> the machine really backs down. It really jumps off and then it jumps off when you apply just a little bit of throttle to it. So uh, I have to say that has really some appeal. And there you have it. Uh, if I do that, that might happen in the next 
month or so. Uh, but uh, it certainly hasn't happened yet. And um, I'm not even sure it will happen. I want to go over to my local dealer and just have a little talk with them about it. I find the dealers fall into uh, kind of two positions on some of these aftermarket uh, modifications. Some of them say, oh, you can't mess with a factory machine. It's designed to the absolute pinnacle of perfection right by the factory. You can't, you got to keep that thing stock. That's my experience at uh, Porsche dealers. The uh, uh, other is, hey, let's do that. It's your money. We'll spend it with you. Come on, let's do it. Let's let's put some more expensive stuff on that thing. So I'm not sure which. Is, so your your ears have to be attuned to both types of dealer response and uh, look for a truth in the middle ground, I suppose, uh, before you make up your mind fully to do it. But I have to say, I am tempted, and uh, sometime in the next little while, I'm going to ride over to my local dealer and have a tete-a-tete with him about uh, perhaps that aftermarket exhaust. Don't know what kind. You can uh, send me notes on what you like. Uh, aftermarket exhaust and fuel mapping. So I'll find out. I'll find out about that. Uh, at least as far as the costs are concerned, and what their overall feelings are. There is a factory homologated Akropovich. And I was told that's the proper uh, spelling for that Akropovich. There is a factory homologated Akropovich, and my understanding is, if my readings are correct, that uh, I wonder if I can make this light without dying. It looks like I will. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, so my understanding is that uh, you can do the Akrapovich without having to go to the extra expense of a um, aftermarket fueler. Okay. So uh, I'm going to explore more about that. I will report back. I am here at the dentist, and there is not a single parking place to be had. So, um, what's a boy to do? I guess I'll go down and park at the end of the street here. I'm going to cheat on the parking a little bit. And uh, see if I can't. find a spot. Hey, it's a motorcycle. You're supposed to be able to do that, right? Hi. Where can one park? Jeez. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Is there a back parking lot here? Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Voyage of Discovery continues. There is a back parking lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, what a day. Oh, there I am in the mirror. And can you see you? I can see you. All right, that's it. We are here. I am, I've got a rendezvous. It's not with a dentist drill. It's a checkup on a little uh, tooth situation. Everybody's got them. So uh, that's all I've got for you right now. Over and out from San Diego, California and aboard Tony Tuono, the 2017 Aprilia factory Tuono. Cheers.